Hi, this is Shadi and today we're going back to 1950 where Ilio Gracie met Yukio Kato for one of the most historical matches uh, in recent history and the match that led to Masahiko Kimura versus Gracie uh, arguably the greatest match of all time but before it three years before this match happened and this match has a lot to teach us the first thing you'd notice is uh, Grip fighting was way too long, way too passive compared to today. For example, today if you establish your grips and do not attack immediately, that's a Shido. So here, for example, both of them will get penalized. So no wonder matches back then lasted uh, a far longer. So here you see uh, Elliot initiates an attack on the knee. Uh, he, he looks like he's kicking the knee, but that's actually uh, a knee wheel or a Hizaguruma. So here you can see it's very passive today that would just never pass that would never fly the referee would just uh, resets the match and give them both a shido or a penalty so that's one of the reasons why matches lasted that long back then here you can see he goes for the hisaguruma again let's see it this is what he was trying to do actually you pull you lift up you pull towards you like uh, kuzushi and then you block with the uh, ball of your foot on the knee and they spin around uh, your foot in a spinning motion like a wheel motion hence the name knee wheel or hisaguruma in japanese this is footage uh, credit to uh, efficient judo i believe so here let's see it again you pull and you block the knee so that's only the upper body that's rotating around the foot so here more uh, subtle grip fighting or passive grip fighting uh, Hiryo Gracie is trying to feint with his feet, he lifts them up. Uh, and this is the thing with uh, Japanese grip fighting. Till this day, it's a little bit like this, still like this. But if they establish their grips and they see the opening, they're gonna attack. Uh, it's not like this. This is even far more uh, passive, in my opinion. So here you can see he tried to sweep the foot. Let's see it again. He catches the ankle and drives forward this is a driving kosotogari or a sticky foot kosotogari the classical kosotogari is just you sweep the foot uh, as an attempt to counter here at Tai otoshi you just sweep the foot you sweep the foot forward uh, your opponent's foot forward and they fall down easily uh, after as a counter attack so here you can see you sweep it uh, here he will demonstrate the driving motion you brush the mat forward uh, and around the ankle from the back and that's how you do it but there's also a driving foot driving variation or a ken ken kosoto gari here when they attempt to lift their leg up you follow them back you drive them and because they're on one leg their balance is pretty much destroyed and with the sleeve and the lapel you cut down as you hop forward yourself so it's pretty natural to lift your foot up in order to resist it but that's actually contributing to the hopping motion and the driving so uh, here they continue more here your grace is lifting his leg up trying to feint uh, a foot sweep again you see very passive today that would just not uh, be acceptable they would both be penalized so here you see kato lift him lifting him up on the hips and you see the leg lift up so let's see it again so here he pulls him he hurls him on his hips and lifts his leg up so i would assume in my opinion that's a harai goshi or sweeping hips uh, you see fedor doing this uh, in mma here you lift on your hips and you also sweeping you sweep back in order to completely destroy the balance and lift them up with your hips and you take them down so uh, Harai Goshi a classical piece of judo here you can see but that's the thing uh, the ropes in the ring is a bad idea in my opinion for something like judo because when they fall on the ropes and they bounce back you can never see the quality of the throw the finish of the throw how they landed were they flat on their back were they on their side uh, you don't see the quality of the throw uh, in case there's ropes so the place where they did it in my opinion it's a bad idea they need an open space like a either a wrestling ring like the circle or a judo mat so here uh, 
very very passive again but he bam when he sees his opening he attacks with Oso Togari but Helio uh, is too tall he moves to the side uh, classical Oso Togari uh, Kato is just way shorter so uh, Helio all he had to do was uh, move to the side a bit and just readjust his weight and avoid the throw altogether even though he clipped his leg so again another classical piece of judo the Osotogari but again the, the ropes may have helped Helio here to defend the throw but uh, I don't know if there was ropes he, he could have probably taken him down so again another classical piece so here the beginning of the end more uh, passive grip fighting weighting each other uh, moving a little bit around so here he lets go of the sleeve and goes for a shoulder throw or an arm throw or an ippon seonage as you're gonna see here still waiting very passive if you have your grips you cannot stall that long in today's era hence why matches lasted that long back in the day he lets go of the sleeve and takes him down with ippon seonage let's see it again he passes his hand he lifts him up and completely uh, takes him down and here this is you have two versions of Seonage either uh, the arm that's grabbing the sleeve you pass the other one around and take them down or the one that's grabbing the lapel uh, you shoot your other arm under it and lift them up for Seonage so uh, here you saw for example Helio is far taller than Kato so uh, it was very easy for Kato to just load him on his back and do Seonage and also Helio was creating the distance they were far from each other the arms were extended so it was perfect for Kato to take him down for Epon Seonage and Harai Goshi so here you can see under the lapel so he, this is what Kato did he passed his arm under the arm that's grabbing the lapel and not the sleeve you have two versions either under the arm that's grabbing the sleeve or the lapel so here let's see the beginning of the end you see here uh, Elio trying to pass his legs under him but uh, with his arm his arms I would guess he's pushing him you can see his foot is next to his belt uh, he has one leg between his legs now uh, and one leg is acting almost like a knee shield you see it next to his, next to Kato's belt the footage is not very clear but you try to see he slips one leg between his legs uh, I believe he was trying to block him with his arms and Kato's trying to pass guard if I uh, if I'm not mistaken here so here he gets his grip very deep the cross grip before even establishing guard that's in my opinion a brilliant move very simple yet brilliant because once you do recover guard the choke is already there so he reached his arm very deep into uh, the collar before establishing guard and that what made him uh, have a successful choke when he once he established guard but there's a few things to unpack here attacking from guard is nothing new this is from game of jujitsu by yuki otani uh, open and closed guard so attacking off your back is nothing new i i, I believe kama jujitsu said that uh, oh if uh, attacking from your back or it's just judo then why did Kato didn't see this because the, the setup was just brilliant by Ilio Gracie here another one by uh, Sadakazu Uyanishi 1905 attacking from cross collar choke uh, off his back uh, there's two ways to do this if you're from open guard you kick the legs and you flatten them out which really accentuates uh, the choke as you see here and you also have three types of cross strokes for those of you who don't know you have Nami Juji Jime where both palms are facing down you also have a, a mixed grip where one, one palm is up and one palm is down and here you have both palms are up it's called a Gyaku Juji Jime so you can just simply call it Juji Jime uh, whether it's Kata or Nami or Gyaku it doesn't matter it, uh, what matters is you get your uh, grips very deep so the third one is a mixed grip palm up palm down it's called kata juji jime for those of you who don't know
and here where you can do it off your back not just uh, from mount so it's nothing new but what helio did in my opinion was uh, a genius he slowly recovered guard uh, with his uh, he establishes a knee shield almost uh, and pushes with his arms um, and also trying to bring one leg in and then goes uh, deep for a cross a collar a grip before establishing guard so once he does establish guard uh, he can be able to perform or execute the choke uh, very easily. It's a simple yet brilliant setup. So this match has taught us a few things. The first one being the stand-up in judo, in my opinion, has uh, evolved tremendously. Today's age, there's no grip fighting that looks like this. This is, if you see two people doing this today, they're like uh, yellow belt or orange belt or even white belts. Today's age, the grip fighting is far more explosive it's far more dynamic uh, you get penalized if you're just a little bit passive and that in my opinion has allowed uh, the sport to uh, really evolve and the second thing uh, that we learned is that the basics will always take you a very long way Sadakazu Uyenishi's book and Yukiotani's book all these throws that we saw they exist there attacking off your back with the cross choke Another classical piece of Judo and Japanese Jiu Jitsu. Uh, the books that I've shown, one is from 1905 and one is from 1906. But just to show how the basics can really take you a long way if you know how to establish them and uh, set them up correctly. This match, in my opinion, is very important and very iconic. It has a lot to teach us. That's why we need far more historical footage like this. So, whoever owns the Helio versus Kimura uh, video, please release it in its entirety. We know the result, we know what, what attacks they tried to do, but I believe there's a lot more subtleties to teach us. We need this footage for our sport, for our history, and to evolve the sport in general and see where we are at or if there's something that we can still learn from uh, people like Kimura or Ilio Gracie. Uh, in my opinion, I urge anyone to release this footage because it's very important for our history and just for us in general. So if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.